right. The map is polyploid, and in the bottom right, our Terran player hailing from Canada, it's Gypsy. In the top left, our Zerg player hailing from the good old US of A, it's Jayun. Now that is some high quality observing right there. All right, it's our first map. Uh, as you know, it is King of the Hill. Every map worth 25 bucks, so a lot on the line. Uh, I figured Polypoid was a good starting map just for everyone the whole time. And I decided to just start with a different matchup for each group. So yesterday we started with PVZ, today is TVZ, and tomorrow will be TVP as the starting match. Unless someone, you know, is late or something. Uh, but yeah, that's that's why we're starting here on Jayun against Gypsy. Uh, between these two, I'm really unsure who's going to take it. I think it definitely could go either way. I feel like it is just slightly Gypsy favored. He's been pretty active lately. His best matchup, he says, is Terran versus Zerg. Um, and Jayun's best matchup uh, is Zerg versus Protoss, and he's been playing a decent amount of Protoss lately. So when you put all that together, it feels like his ZVT would be the most neglected uh, at the moment. Whereas, uh, obviously, Gypsy going to be feeling pretty strong about that. So, that's that's my guess. I think that, yeah, like I said, Gypsy may be slightly favored. But I think odds are they'll play each other multiple times today. And it'll probably be a pretty close map score, honestly. Uh, Jayun definitely knows how to win. Now, taking a look at how Gypsy is opening this up. Uh, going for a wall. And I think it'll be a full wall into probably, like, plus one uh, bio play. I'd be pretty surprised if it's anything else. Generally, when you go for a wall like this, which, by the way, this is if you put the depot on top of the barracks, that is Zergling tight. Uh, and I know that this is Zergling tight, and I believe that this right here is Zergling tight as well. So I think that this will be a completely Zergling tight wall. But even if you have one hole in it, a wall in like this uh, allows you to play a very greedy Terran style. You can skip making a bunker. You can skimp on Marines to get your plus one going really quickly. It's a very powerful way to play, but can be punished by things like Lurker Rushes and uh, Mutalist Harassment in general. Now taking a look over at Jayun's side. He has his hatchery uh, going up here. And finishes his gas. Got to get mining on that. Yep, looks like he's timing himself out for that very clean three-minute layer. Good spread of scouting. Overlords being sent out. Kind of leaving this in a position to see any SCVs coming or anything. Drone going now to that cross spawn. And he will see the wall. Now the gas is coming up. I think we're going to see an eBay here very shortly. Uh, of course, if we don't... Like, there is a slight possibility that you tech up from here. Uh, you're going to have to be a little bit turret heavy against 2 Hmuta, But that's alright. Now, the drone hold position on the ramp. This is a, this is a huge mind game, actually in case you guys didn't realize. So, Zerg can hold position earlier than the other races because you have an Overlord there. Uh, basically, workers don't have the hold position function. So, uh, you have to basically have a unit to select with them to do it. So, he's hold positioned. And while the SCV can technically, like, attack the drone, then another drone will come up to help, and then the SCV can't win. So, a lot of times, it's not worth it to attack the drone. But here, Gypsy has to wonder, is there a third hatch or is there a layer on the way? And he simply doesn't know. So this is a big mind game. And there's no real way for Gypsy to figure this out. Uh, I've actually heard people say, like I've talked to people about this, and a lot of people say, if they hold position the drone on the ramp, it's three hatch. I haven't found that to be the case personally, because a lot of Zergs do this against me as well. And the thing is, it makes sense though, because no matter what, you have to prepare for two hatch replay. If you make your turrets, uh, when a drone is hold positioned on that ramp, at the three hatchery timing, the mutas will be in your base before you start them. So you will actually just die. So uh, it makes sense, right, that that would be a, a, a strong and intelligent way to block the ramp because they're going to have to defend two hatch muta when you're actually going three hatch muta. Now, Gypsy just doesn't know. He hasn't gotten the intel. He did not get up here to see the spire, which is put into the natural. And I think that the Spire put in the natural is actually brilliant as well from Jayun. Just the, the levels of mind games here. Uh, basically, Gypsy is going to have a, a one to two scans. We'll see how many he makes. Some players make one. Some players make two right off the bat. Uh, but he might scan the main looking for what's going on. And look at this. He's throwing down the Hydralisk den. 
just in time to be finished when the first scan comes. This is actually... I want to pause the game to talk for 20 minutes about the moves Jayun has made here because he's actually playing brilliantly. Now, we'll see if Gypsy does the double scan. Either way, you're going to get a little bit confused from the double tech. This is not optimal from Zerg, but it's a big mind game. But because the main was blocked, you're more likely to scan here first, whereas in a normal game, you'll scan here first. Yep, there's the scan. He scanned the main. Now he sees a Hydra stand. He doesn't know if that finished. He actually uses the second scan. So Gypsy wasn't buying it. He uses the second scan. Oh my God, this is craziness. He's so like, I'm getting chills right now. Okay, listen to me. He just used the second scan here. When you see the Hydralis den, you got to be a little bit scared because at 530 with a two hatch play, they can have lurkers in front of your base. Okay, but he was like, I'm not buying it, Jay Yoon. You're doing mind games. He scans the natural. He sees the spire. If you see both, there's never Hydralis den and spire and it becomes lurkers, right? They are always going to make the mutas there. So now he's actually prepared. This is madness. This is crazy. The mind games are real. Woo! This is some high-level stuff you guys are watching. My god. Okay, so Gypsy has gone with the plus one build. He's already got four racks up. He's making a bunch of turrets. His turret coverage is actually awesome. These are good turret placements. I'm, I'm kind of a fan. I like these two turrets here. I might steal that. This is an interesting placement as well. Kind of zoning turrets on top of the barracks. He's making his third here. You are going to need to, and especially with this one up against the wall, you're going to have to make a decent amount of turrets if Jayun actually uh, commits in there. Of course, his plus one is going to be done, as you see. Uh, doesn't have his plus two going yet, so or uh, his plus uh, one armor, rather. So he does need to fix that. Jayun's starting to go after some of these turrets. He does have his third hatchery up. We don't know what his plan is here. I, th I think he'll go into Lurker, but he's got to stay on Muta for a while because... Ooh, look at that pickoff. Already a lot of damage. But you have to stay on Muta for a while. Like, he doesn't have time to go into Lurker yet. He needs to buy a little bit more time with these Mutas. So we do need to see him make a few more. Or he's, like, playing completely risky. But man, I'm actually, like, super stoked about how many mind games we've already seen. Now, Gypsy started his factory, it looks like, right around 7 minutes. Which is a pretty normal timing for this. Uh, so he's going to have uh, just regularly timed out science vessels or whatever it is he wants to go for. We do see more of those mutas being made. Gypsy pulled back, reinforced, sending out a gigantic force. Now, this is a really scary army. Jayu needs to get on top of this immediately and slow this down. He needs to be picking off medics, fringe marines. Ooh, he's a little bit off. His overlord does see the army walk past. So see how he's coming up from a funny angle. He's trying to catch units that are in the back. Now, Gypsy very quickly stims the back marines, tries to get some damage. This is a full group of mutas, though. So they can get a lot done. No upgrades there as of yet. First lurker is out. I'm getting chills again. Oh, my God. I love this. This is so... It's awesome watching these guys. Some seriously high-level play going on right now. He's buying just enough time to actually get some defense up. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any other lurkers. Like, this is a double ramped base. So, you actually need a fair amount of lurkers to hold on to this correctly. Scans a natural. Only a single lurker here with two sunks. He can actually kind of break something like that as well. Looks like Jayun continues to pick off uh, some of these units here with the mutas. But, unfortunately, he loses two. It does bring down his damage output quite a bit. We still don't see an upgrade. So, I think he actually skipped muta upgrades. All right, that gets burrowed. He has another one up here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Does get the burrow off. Little does Gypsy know he could have gone around this side. All right. It looks like... Did he make another Muta? No, we're just... Thought, we're going to sit on 10, I think. Makes sense. All right. Losing a few here. Good targeting there by Gypsy. All right. Moving up through the map. We have the double starport coming. Science facility on the way. Gypsy's army, you don't want to attack into this. He doesn't have enough right now. With the Mutas coming in from behind, two Sunkens, two Lurkers, you cannot break that with this. He is... Well, actually, I'm not sure exactly when he started his plus one. We know it was a little bit late, so I'm not sure when that's going to finish. Very, very helpful, though, against this type of uh, situation. Makes an, an additional hit required for Lurkers and Sunks. Um, all right, so four Lurkers up here, two here. Evolution Chamber started, his Hive is done, a Macro Hatch coming up. Uh, certainly, he should be getting Adrenal relatively soon. He needs to get... 
uh, that plus one carapace, that is a little bit late for him. So he's going to rely heavily on defilers. If you don't have uh, your evolution chamber very quickly, and as we see, this is a little bit late for Jayun, uh, which is fine. It's like you can you can choose to play any way that you want. But if you don't have that quickly, you, you kind of rely on defilers for a bit longer. So he's going to need consume. He's going to need plague, nidus. He's going to have to gain value through those over time because his actual army is not going to be able to fight without those spells. Whereas if you do get the carapace like really early, like before you start your hive or anything, then sometimes you can go defilers for a slightly shorter time and try to switch into mute or uh, ultras if you've had some decent engagements, like right as you're taking your fourth base. Uh, but yeah, that, that'll probably be a much later game play here for Jayun if he gets into ultras. The fifth barracks up for Gypsy. Double science vessel production. Double engineering bay. Okay, he's got his 1-1, one, one, so he's got 2-2 two, two coming. Very solid from Gypsy. This looks... It looks extremely clean. A little bit of miss mining here due to turret placement. That happens on a lot of positions. Uh, maybe missing just a little bit on his macro. Looks like he, he got supply blocked a bit. It's hard to hit your depots and all your production. Uh, Terran versus Zerg with... Uh, SK Terran, which is Science Vessel Marine Medic, is the hardest to macro. It like requires the most speed of anything in the game. Uh, so it's really hard to keep up with that. Marines just build so, so quickly. You have to move them around a lot as well. But he's doing a good job. He's got good supply. He's up 30, 30 40 supply right now. Or 30, I guess, yeah. Uh, just over. Now, Defiler's popping out. Starting to make some lings. He does have that macro hatch. Another macro hatch on the way. I've noticed that in, uh, North American Zerg's really dig macro hatches in these types of situations. They like to get those extra lings out. All right, comes up with that array. Ooh, that dodge. So handsome from Gypsy. Uh, keeps the vessel alive despite how close the Scourge were. And we did get a couple of radiates down onto these lurkers. The filers in both locations. I'm sure he has Plague on the way already. I don't think he has it yet. And yeah, it does throw down that Dark Swarm over that Lurker. So, cannot be broken. Gypsy trying to get a break there. Unable to do so. Looks like he's going to lose a Vessel. You can lose some Vessels. But, you, like, Vessel retention is a very important metric in Terran vs. Zerg. Uh, it's something I think that's not really talked about enough. If you lose too many Vessels, you actually just lose the game. Whereas, if you have enough Vessels, you can just grind Zerg down over time. But they are very micro-intensive. They are very expensive. Looks like Jayun going to push up with a single Lurker. He's giving himself just a little bit more room here. Also, as a Zerg, you'd prefer that they irradiate Lurkers to Defilers. Defilers, just a little bit more expensive as far as that very important gas. Oh, no! Loses another Vessel there that actually had energy. Now, here comes the Plague. First Plague of the game. We should keep track of that. All right, so we have one plague has been cast. That's that's how you gain a lot of value over time as Zerg. Now, here's the problem for Jayun. He took this base, which was the easiest one to take and hold on three bases, but that makes taking a fourth harder, right? Uh, which is a very important thing to mention because you need the fourth base. In fact, the way you're supposed to win as SK Terran, like I know that people get excited by things like drop ships and busting sunkens and lurkers and stuff, but the actual way that you're supposed to win as the bio player against Zerg is to deny the fourth gas. That is the straightest path to victory. Because while we see the plagues and the defilers and the dark swarms, we see some ultras coming out. If Gypsy macros well and micros reasonably, he can fight everything on three gas forever. Uh, but yeah, it's it just kind of comes down to uh, does Jayun take really great fights on three gas or does he get the fourth gas up? All right, looks like we're going to have a little bit of scuffling out here with that single defiler. Like he has his clear radiate targets gets. Oh, gosh, a little bit of a miss micro there from Gypsy taking some extra hits. The Dark Storm goes down, loses another vessel there, does irradiate the defiler, does irradiate the ultralisk, both very high. Uh. I value targets there. Of course, a Radiate won't kill an Ultralisk, and in fact, in some ways, it makes it more dangerous against your Bio Army, but you really want to Radiate them. You need to get some of that health off so you can actually pop them later on. Gypsy, in the meantime, has taken his third gas. He's taken this Mineral Base, and this is a very important thing as well. 
Uh, he's going for the physics lab. He's up to eight racks. This is some fantastic play out of chips. He's keeping his money really low considering his bases as well. Again, very hard to macro in this situation. I love his group of Marines up here, knowing that this is going to be a base that Jayden wants to take. But Jayden's actually going for the mineral base. It's very stylistic. This means he's really, and that plus the macro hatches, point towards lots of Zerglings from Jayden in this game. Lots and lots and lots. Okay, looks like Jayden wants to try to break through here. Of course, he will be able to without too much trouble. But Gypsy knows where the army is. He's actually being rather efficient here as well. He's got 2-2 two, two upgrades against plus one carapace zergling so you can see those marines worth their weight in zergling blood it right, comes up once again losing a lot oh man it does keep that one alive somehow oh he actually gets the defiler before the dark storm comes down the lurkers will burrow but gypsy should be able to erase all this he does have those two two upgrades all right and does get the cancel on this base so that yeah he lost a lot of vessels this game so far but he's actually getting a lot of good engagements as well now, somehow, <laughs> he eats the Defiler. I love it. I love it. He has to, though, because he needs that fourth gas, and he knows it. He's got the one Lurker here and one Dark Storm, so it's like, yep, I'll hold off your whole army. Eat the only Defiler. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just get that fourth base up. Now, Gypsy needs to attack this before it gets up, because as soon as it gets up, a Nidus will go down, and Jane will be able to defend it just like any other base. So he's actually on a bit of a clock right there. Gypsy moving up through the map. Let's take a look back at home. Double eBay going. I assume he's making a couple battle cruisers. Honestly, he should be adding a third uh, starport, but he's playing a fantastic game overall. Bringing all of his units to bear up here. Uh, only three ultras. Carapace so far. Jayun overextending here just a little bit. Yeah, the D Matrix goes off on the Marines. If he had misclicked on the ultra, this could be a winning battle. But uh, unfortunately for Jayun, he is he's losing a lot of these ultras. Uh, this is, again, on three gas, this gets very dangerous. And with the speed with which he started the carapace, it makes it a lot harder. Uh, against 2-2, two, two, you have to have four carapace, and it just finished. So that was really a waste of three to four ultras and a lurker or two. Like, the last couple battles we've seen from Jayun have been very inefficient for him, unfortunately. All right, comes out with this army. We do have a defense matrix uh, marine way in the back. And, of course, the Marines are going to do reasonably well here once again because they do have equal upgrades. Two against four is equal. Chitinous plating is that additional two. So that's just kind of the metric that you're looking at there. All right. He kills those vessels again. And we do have that fourth base up. This is a pretty darn close game right now. Like, Gypsy is hitting his macro for the most part. He really needs more starports. Like, I would actually like to see him throw down one to two starports here. Uh, because he does have three gases. So, three, basically, it's one gas per starport production for high-tech units for Terran. Um, but, yeah, like, it's it's going to be a little bit hard if he doesn't replenish that vessel count. All right. Stimming and, oh, an insane plague goes down. Second plague of the game. He does have the BC up here. It looks like he should get a kill. Now, a bunch of Scourge came out. This is a right click onto there because it's not attacking the Zerglings. He hatched these to see if those would attack. And now that he knows that they're right clicked, he can fly the Scourge in to kill. Very smart move here from Jayun. Just barely does not kill both of them. One Scourge shy. He might have actually overclicked on the other one. But yeah, hopefully for his sake, this BC does not kill it. Yeah, he's going to pop those out. Uh, you know, that is one thing you got to mention, right? BCs, one-shot Scourge, if the Scourge don't have that plus one carapace. Uh, so just popping the Lings out to see if they had that, right-clicking the Scourge on, beautiful, beautiful move. Because otherwise, the BCs kill like four or five Scourge before they actually connect. Um, wow. It just, we see so much intelligent from intelligence from the play here of Jayun. Gypsy mechanically just staying on top of things. Let's see if he can keep these vessels alive. Yeah, they will live this time. Starts to shred off a lot of those lings. More vessels being produced. He's up to nine Raxes now. Definitely is supportable. Has the double bunker. Love to see it. Jayun gonna run away from that. Now, I think for Jayun, the really important thing here... I actually wouldn't mind seeing him throw down another hatchery here as well, to be honest, because, like, this is so low. But uh, 
he needs to keep this space up. He needs to get the gas mining. And I feel like he needs more defilers, honestly. All right, comes in. Eliminates the vessels once again. Um, Yeah, it, like, I, I love what I'm seeing uh, from both sides. Like, But Gypsy's vessel retention is that good? Slash, uh, Jane's doing a great job picking them off. Gypsy actually going to run by here? This is never going to work. Oh, my God. Three lurkers there up at a funny, funny angle. And, of course, he has the Nidus up now as well. So, we'll easily push this back. Does have those 3-3 three, three upgrades, though. Gypsy a little bit behind on that for sure. Uh, okay, so one thing, if I could be critical for a moment, because they've both been playing a very strong game. But because of the amount of vessels that have been killed, I think that if Jayun focused more on Defilers and continuing using Plague and Darkstorm, he'd be doing a lot better. Because Gypsy leads in the upgrades but is lacking in science vessel count which means that he wants to fight like uh strength versus strength rather than spells versus spells because the counter to defiler is the vessel the counter to ultra ling is mass bio mass bio is what gypsy has to do because he doesn't have as many vessels now he's been losing a lot of them and jayun uh is going he's like trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that with strength rather than with cheating with defilers basically so uh, would love to see that from, from Jayun a few more. And Gypsy is just getting crazy right now. Attacking so, so aggressively. This Knight is way out in the front. This would be a big pickoff. Anytime you can get a Knight is very, very worth it. Still sending huge amounts of units across the map. Jayun's supply dropping really, really low. Generally, Hivezerg at 70 supply is where they can kind of continue to hold on. Uh, because that's like that means that they have a decent amount of drones. They have some lings and defilers, and they can throw down their dark swarms. But at this point, I think that Jayun is going to get run over. He does use some beautiful burrows against the erasers. Gypsy stimming in. No defilers left over, unfortunately. Popping out some ultras still, but their upgrades are insufficient. And GG is called. Gypsy gonna take that first map. Sick game from both sides. Sick game.